everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today with a very exciting and important announcement and that is about the Book Naturalist Book Club. So some of you have been asking if we're going to continue the Book Naturalist Book Club into 2022 and the answer is yes, we are. Doris and I are very excited to be continuing this very special book club in the next year where we will be continuing to read books with a nature focus um, and to encourage people to pick up more nature writing and to highlight some authors that we think are really great. Um, also, this year we'll be maintaining pretty much the same format where we'll be reading one or two books a month and doing videos at the end of the month on our YouTube channels. Um, also, maybe bringing some more of the Instagram back in towards the second half of the year, but we're not for sure yet. Really, for now, we're just going to like the format wise is going to remain the same, um, but our focus is going to be a little bit different in 2022. So for this upcoming year, we want to focus on women writers of non of nature writing, not all nonfiction, um, but mostly nonfiction with some other things thrown in there, but really focusing on women authors. And then in 2023, we'll be back to sort of the more diversity angle um, and picking up some, some other types of things that we want to focus on. But for 2022, let's focus on that and not get too out, out in advance of ourselves. Um, we will be focusing on women authors. So four of the months will be author spotlight months where you will pick the book that you want to read from that particular author. So it's, uh, for example, in January, it will be one of our author spotlight months. And so we will, the author that we will be spotlighting is Rachel Carson. So uh, for that, I will be reading Silent Spring by Rachel Carson. This is her um, famous work of nature nonfiction that sort of sparked the environmental movement in the United States, really kicked off um, legislation and regulation at the government, the federal government level for protecting the environment. I can't believe I haven't read this already. It's kind of a travesty <laughs> that I have not. Um, the other pick for uh, Rachel Carson is Under the Sea Wind, which is the beginning of her, um, I believe, book of a uh, four book series about sort of sea life and what happens around the sea. Um, I will also be picking up The Sea Around Us because I've already read Under the Sea Wind. I read this in November with Britta and it was amazing. But um, you can certainly pick up any of Rachel Carson's writing that you have not already read or maybe you want to do a reread. It's entirely up to you. And then we'll discuss what we've read at the end of the month um, and hopefully shine some more light on a very important writer of nonfiction uh, nature writing, Rachel Carson. And then other months will focus on a single book title, the same way we've been doing um, throughout the month, uh, throughout the year 2021. So in February, because it's Black History Month, we will be reading Undrowned by Alexis Pauline Gums. And this is a piece of nonfiction that I've had my eye on for a while. It's by a black, uh, black female author, and it sort of brings into play what it's like to be a female scientist um, and I think that, you know, t sort of mixing up um, the the um, issues of feminism with uh, science is a really uh, topic that's of high interest to me. So I'm very excited for us to be picking that up in February for Black History Month. Then in March, we have two picks, one of which I already have on my shelves, and that's Spineless, The Science of Jellyfish and the Art of Growing a Backbone by Julie Wald. Um, so this is a book that Doris uh, sent me to read and I haven't yet gotten to it. Um, and I am very interested in invertebrates, um, particularly jellyfish. I read one other book quite a long time ago, maybe almost 10 years ago, about jellyfish um, and very interested in, um, in that particular class of animals. Um, so excited about that. We will also be picking up why Fish Don't Exist by Lulu Miller, um, which is a book that I don't yet have a copy of. I will put a picture up here. So those will be the two picks for the month of March. In April, we will do another author spotlight. And in that month, we'll be um, spotlighting Jennifer Ackerman, who is a very prolific writer of books about, particularly about birds. Um, I read her book, The Genius of Birds, um, 
maybe two years ago. And that will be one of the picks that uh, Doris and I will be reading. And then the other book of hers that I have on my shelves is Birds by the Shore, um, which is about uh, her living in Delaware and the birds that she found in that particular environment, um, mid-Atlantic United States and what the shorebirds are like uh, in that area. And it sort of is a blend of memoir and nature writing. And so I really enjoyed The Genius of Birds when I read that book by her um, a couple years ago. Uh, so excited to check out another book by Jennifer Ackerman. So that's April. And then in May, we will be picking up a new release. And that will be, again, I don't have this yet because it won't be released until February, so I can't purchase it yet. But the book is Small Bodies of Water by Nina Mingya Powells. And again, I'll put a picture here for your pre-planning purposes. That will be May's book. And then in June, we will be, pick, we will be uh, picking up another sort of classic of nature nonfiction, and that is Pilgrim at Tinker Creek by Annie Dillard. Again, this is a book that I've read, but it uh, was a couple of years ago, so I will be excited to be rereading this, and I think it's a type of a book that really does benefit from a, at least a second read, because Annie Dillard is such a deep thinker about the connections between humans and the natural environment, and what it means to be a part of nature and to be in nature. And uh, I think it certainly it warrants a second look at her writing. And if you haven't yet read this book, Pilgrim at Tinker Creek, it certainly is a modern classic of nature writing. Then in uh, July, we have another new release. This one won't be released until April, but it is Thin Places by Carrie and I am not even going to attempt to pronounce her last name. You will see the cover here. Um, and it has a beautiful cover with the, the wings on it. Um, and uh, so that will be our July pick. In August, we will be doing another author spotlight. So you can pick from any of Mary Oliver's works. This is a collection of her poetry called A Thousand Mornings that I read, um, I think, this past year. A beautiful nature imagery in Mary Oliver's poetry. Other um, selections that Doris and I are hoping to get to in the month of August with Mary Oliver are Upstream, which is a collection of essays by Mary Oliver, and Devotions, which is another poetry collection. Um, so I have been wanting to read more Mary Oliver ever since I read this very slim collection. I think she is just a gorgeous, gorgeous writer. So thrilled to have her included in our 2022 list. In September, we will be reading this memoir, Two Trees Make a Forest, In Search of My Family's Past Among Taiwan's Mountains and Coast by Jessica J. Lee. I just picked this book up um, actually in the month of December and I uh, haven't even hauled it yet, but uh, I was hoping that we would include this in 2022 in our list of books to read and I'm thrilled we are going to. First of all, this cover, like stunning. And this is a memoir of a woman who goes back to her Taiwan, Taiwan, her, it's basically her, where her ancestors came from was Taiwan. And so she goes back there to try to make connections to that environment um, and um, what it feels like to be coming back, quote unquote, home to an environment that's not familiar to you. So yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about Two Trees Make a Forest. So thrilled about that. In October, we will be reading another um, classic of nature writing, and that is In the Shadow of Man by Jane Goodall. Of course, Jane Goodall being the primate researcher um, uh, that everybody knows about. Uh, and I have not, shamefully, have not yet read any Jane Goodall. So I'm really excited that we've included her on the list for 2022 so I can finally rectify that big um, gaping hole in my nature, <laughs> my nature writing life. Then in November for Indigathon, we will be picking up Gathering Moss by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Here's a little editing, Heidi, to pop in to tell you that the fourth author that is the author spotlight for Book Naturalist for 2022 is Robin Wall Kimmerer. So if you have not yet read Braiding Sweetgrass, we would highly encourage you to pick that one up as well. Um, as far as in addition to or in place of Gathering Moss, it makes no difference. Her writing is just absolutely gorgeous. And anything that you read by Robin Wall Kimmerer is going to be um, amazing and worth your time. So yeah, that's the fourth um, author that we're spotlighting this year. And sorry that I forgot to mention it in the original filming of this video. 
Um, we read Braiding Sweetgrass, I think not this past year, but the year before. Loved Braiding Sweetgrass. That book is just absolutely, just absolutely stunning. And uh, yeah, so I was really excited to finally pick up a copy of this. I think um, I picked this up in the last couple of months and was hoping that I would be able to get to it in 2022. And I think Indigathon is a perfect time to read it because of course, um, Robin Wall Kimmer is um, an indigenous author. So uh, this is a natural and cultural history of mosses. I'm up for it. I am here for it. I'm here for anything Robin Wall Kimmer wants to write. And then lastly, in December, we will be reading Terry Tempest Williams, um, another um, just sort of classic author of nature writing. This is The Hour of Land, A Personal Topography of America's National Parks. I have read this, but I am excited to do a reread because it's been three or four years since I read this. And this, again, is just gorgeous. This is her exploration of America's national parks. This picture right here is from Acadia National Park, which is in my home state of Maine, um, the only national park that we have in the state of Maine. Um, and this is just, it's such a gorgeous book talking about the beautiful places in America and the places that we have, um, we have preserved and we celebrate because of the natural beauty um, and the, how those places, um, ooh, dropped the book how those places have fit into her life um, and have had great meaning in her life. And this particular, this hardcover copy, I just want to point out also it has this wrap around um, book cover, but then the actual hardcover has this picture on it. And that's what the back looks like. And that's what the spine looks like. So this is just, you know, it's one of those books that's a gorgeous object to own as well as being um, the contents being amazing. So I am very, very excited about all of these books. I'm excited to continue to be talking about nature and nonfiction with you in 2022. Um, as we go on, you know, we'll talk about these books more in depth as the months arrive for us to read them. And I certainly will do reminder um, announcements in other videos for what books are coming up. But this will be, this will serve as a reference video for sort of the entire list um, for the month and I mean for the year, excuse me, and I hope that you will all join in with us again in 2022. We really appreciate um, the enthusiasm that's been shown for the Book Naturalist Book Club in the month of, in the year of 2021. Um, we've just felt like, you know, people have really been excited about uh, reading these kinds of books and we're very, we just feel it's so important to shine more light on nature writing because it is an area that doesn't always get um, all the attention it deserves. And it's just an important, important section of our reading lives to read more about nature. So yeah, that's it. That's the announcement. That's the list of books and authors that we'll be checking out in 2022. Again, I hope you will join us for at least some of these reads, if not all of them. I look forward to talking with you in the comments about them. And as we go through the year, when I post my review videos, discussing them there as well. I hope you're all doing well and finding some great books to read. And I will talk to you later.